Welcome to another video here on our YouTube channel. The question I have for you is how do you get rid of wrinkles and aging skin? Is it possible to get rid of it? Yes or no? I'll start with the questions here. Assuming it is possible, how do you get rid of wrinkles and aging skin? That's what we're going to talk about today in this video, okay? But I'll start this video by asking you. Scroll down in the comments, subscribe to our channel, click on the little bell to activate notifications. This little bell is very important for you to know that there's a new video every day. Leave a like. So is it possible? Yes, it is possible. To get rid of wrinkles and aging skin. Now I'm going to ask you the second question. Is it possible to get rid of wrinkles and aging skin? Forever. If you want to die without wrinkles, there's a solution. You die before you're 25. If you want to die without any wrinkles, you die as a child, you die at 25. I want to die full of wrinkles. I want to die like a passion fruit in a drawer. I want to die 150 years old like a passion fruit from a drawer because I love this life. Bahiano, how do you get wrinkles? Without a wrinkle, I'll tell you. You do plastic surgery or you do Botox or you do both. You do facial harmonization, you do laser and you take collagen supplements and you eat everything I'm going to talk about today, right? That way you get Ah, Diane, but it's very expensive to do all this. It's very expensive. I don't have the money for plastic surgery. I don't have the money for Botox. I don't have the money for harmonization. So do what I'm going to tell you today, okay? Because it's interesting for you to know that these procedures, Botox, plastic surgery, harmonization, they're good. They're not bad. If you have it done by a good professional at the right time, and you have the money for it, that's fine. If that was important to you, now they alone won't help. The problem is that people only stretch and don't give the skin the right nourishment. Our focus today will be on skin health. The skin is the largest organ in the human body. The skin is our calling card. The skin reflects how you are inside. If you look at a person and you look at them with dark circles, ugly, blemished, dry, sick, dehydrated skin, you know they're sick. I know a sick person when I look at their skin. Oily, red, allergic skin is sick. Pimples, psoriasis, they're sick. All you have to do is compare the skin of someone whose body is inflamed and someone who has deflated it. And I challenge you. Take a picture of your face. It's obvious. Take your face, take a picture, and go 10 days without eating bread. Without eating bread, just do it. After 10 days, take another picture of your face and look what happened. So it's not a skin problem. It's not strictly aesthetic, but it's a health problem too. Why is that? Because the body is showing that you have too many toxins. You're lacking in nutrients. It's showing that free radicals are destroying your body. So a lot of people think that caring for your skin, nails and hair is just a matter of using a cream, but that's not the case. Cream is 1%. They can help you. But if your rhythm of life is stressful, if you live on cachaca, if you have an unhealthy diet, these creams won't do any good. Our skin has three layers. Where collagen is distributed, keratin, which is also present in hair, and elastin. When you drink too little water, this lack of hydration will be noticed in the form of dry skin. Dry skin, rough skin, skin with no elasticity. And one of the causes of premature aging which is the nightmare of millions of women, is directly linked to water consumption. Often you go to the dermatologist. He gives you expensive creams, some of which are even paid for by the industry, but he doesn't tell you to drink water. How much water are you drinking a day? As I've said in other videos, a healthy diet, rich in antioxidant foods such as citrus fruits, broccoli, grapes, tomatoes, and other fruits, helps to slow down aging. Now, you can't talk about skin texture or appearance without mentioning collagen. What is collagen, Diane? It's a protein made up of thousands of amino acids. It's like a train. Inside this train, there are several wagons. And this protein is responsible for making your skin more resistant and more elastic. Do you want to know how good your collagen is? When someone goes to pierce your skin with a needle, if it's hard to pierce, it's because your skin has too much collagen. If you have very thin skin, skin like silk, that can be pierced by anything, 
you have too little collagen. Thick skin, skin that's tough enough to stick a needle through, is skin that's full of collagen. Collagen is a protein made up of thousands of amino acids, and it does this. Collagen strengthens tendons and ligaments. Ligaments are what connect muscles to bones, for example, and support internal organs. Bones and teeth are made by adding minerals to collagen. 75% of the skin is collagen. It is a product that comes from animal origin. It's basically extracted from the skin, cartilage and tendons of poultry, pigs and cattle. So, from the age of 25, our collagen production begins to fall. And we lose 1% of collagen every year. So do the math. You've passed the age of 25. How long has it been since you were 25? That's 1% every year. And then the expression lines start to appear. The skin starts to become more fragile, less elastic. It starts to fall off, making that mustache, making that mouth full of barcodes. The little mouth gets shriveled. That jowl falls off. The design of the chin ends. And then, as being a woman isn't easy to complicate matters, they produce less collagen than men. Did you know that? That's why you're 55. You're always taking care of yourself and your skin is worse than your husband's who doesn't do anything. Women produce less. And during the menopause, for example, the rate of loss increases still further, reaching 30% of collagen loss in the first five years. Skin with collagen acquires more tone, more hydration, and may even have less sagging. And I'm going to give you some tips here on collagen-rich foods. Write them down so you can start using them. First of all, red meat. Eat red meat. Secondly, bones. For example, mokoto. You have to stop being a cool person. So eat mokoto, ankle bones. Make mokoto broth if you don't know what it is. It's the same broth as bulko bone, cartilage, tendons, pellets, pork skin and bone, chicken. The older the chicken, the better. You know that old chicken? It takes a while to cook. It's the best there is, especially when you eat the feet. Chicken feet are rich in collagen. You need to eat foods rich in vitamin C, selenium, zinc, and silicon. These nutrients help in the production and absorption of collagen and generate better results in health and aesthetic treatments. So always have pineapple and oranges at home. You don't want to make orange juice. You want to eat the orange. Lemon, guava. How long has it been since you bought a guava in the supermarket? Start buying these fruits. When it's harvest time, they're even cheaper. Papaya, cashew, kiwi. Kiwi fruit at night helps to produce melatonin. Tangerine, red berries. I know it's more expensive, but make the effort. Strawberries, cherries, raw peppers. People, here in the United States, I've been trying a lot of different fruits and vegetables. I've never eaten raw yellow peppers before. It's delicious. Watercress, parsley, fresh tomatoes. Tomatoes, ideally you should buy them, but at least eat them cooked or warmed up. Eat foods rich in selenium, which will help. It will help your nails and hair and will also help your thyroid. It will make it easier for you to lose weight. Eat fish. You have to eat fish. In my house here, I'm creating new habits here in the United States. It's easier for me here. I eat fish three times a week. If you can, eat shrimp once in a while. Black beans. Black beans are rich in selenium. Chestnut from Para. It's the chestnut remedy from Para. Egg yolk, liver, there's something for everyone. You need foods rich in zinc. Egg white has zinc. Chicken oysters, which aren't so easy. Nuts, shellfish, red meat, liver, kidneys. Now, there's a lot of talk about collagen. But for collagen to work properly, you need to take it with vitamin C. This stimulates its production. Another important element for the skin is hyaluronic acid. I'm going to talk about it now. So... Hyaluronic acid is responsible for retaining water, so it keeps your tissues hydrated, your joints lubricated. It also acts to stimulate collagen production. Hyaluronic acid can be found in greater quantities in connective tissue, but it is most concentrated in the skin, all the skin and in the eyes. The production of hyaluronic acid also decreases throughout life. It's the same thing, and as you get older, you have a lower quantity of this substance. This also leads to an increase in wrinkles, expression marks, and loss of skin volume. Then you see that person who is all you see. 
It's called false rejuvenation. That person who was much fuller when they were younger, then they've aged 10 years and they're skinnier. Woman, you look so good, you're thinner. No, they've lost muscle and collagen. Then they shrivel up. It's full of fat, but it's shriveled up. So it won't do much good if you fill up on collagen. There's no point in buying collagen because it contains vitamin C and hyaluronic acid. If your intestines, especially your bacteria, in other words, your microbiota, aren't right either. So if you think your skin has nothing to do with your gut, you're dead wrong. Everything that happens inside us is reflected in our skin. And the functioning of your microbiota, of those gut bacteria, is one of the main things that regulates your gut skin axis. Diane, I've heard of the axis. Gut brain has a gut brain axis. You name it. If your gut is good, your skin is bad. So the gut influences the regulation and renewal of skin cells. So your skin needs to be constantly renewing its cells. When it receives radiation, for example, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, when it's healing, when the intestine isn't healthy, look at this. Doctors are going to operate on patients. My God in heaven, I've made a lot of mistakes with this. You operate on a patient and the patient doesn't heal. And you think it's because the healing is bad? You just didn't ask a patient in the pre-op. A fundamental question that doctors don't ask, which is how's your intestine? If I were to operate again today, I wouldn't operate on anyone with a bad intestine. First, improve your intestines so we can operate on you. I'm not going to operate on you with a stuck bowel because it will inflame, it will get infected, it will literally go to shit. You'd give a surgeon a lecture with that story alone. When your intestine isn't healthy, inflammation takes over your body. It can potentiate problems such as pimples. How many times have you had pimples and no one has ever asked you about your intestines? So when you improve your gut, you improve pimples, you improve psoriasis. Then you worsen rosacea, eczema, allergic dermatitis. And why is that? Because poor intestinal health stimulates the production of substances that inflame your body and substances that inhibit your immune system. This creates a situation of inflammation throughout the body which we call chronic and systemic inflammation. If your gut is bad, the absorption of nutrients will also be compromised. And among these nutrients are those that are good for the skin, like vitamins A, C, amino acids, and collagen. So if you want to have the skin of your dreams, take care of your gut first. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said Hippocrates, not me. All diseases start in the gut. And in order to keep these intestinal bacteria in order, your diet, your lifestyle, all have a direct influence on your life and your intestinal health. So you need to have a healthy, balanced diet, rich in fiber, good hydration, as well as a lifestyle without excess, so that it can be reflected in your skin. Studies show that some amino acids, which are small pieces of protein, help to recap your intestines. They coat the gut, they help the microbiota, these good bacteria. And these are molecules like arginine, glycine, cysteine glutamate, glutamine. These are substances that your nutritionist, your doctor can pass on to you. And you also get them in a balanced, healthy diet with real food. Now you can't eat bread, ketchup, mayonnaise, cookies and chips. So it's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant foods such as fruit and vegetables that sweep away these free radicals and these foods should not be missing. Physical exercise also helps the bowels to function properly. Diane, but I can't, I'm not talking about you becoming a fitness model. I'm talking about you walking, a walk. A walk makes your intestines work better. And when you walk a little faster, you sweat. When you sweat while walking, you do two detoxes. One for your skin, which is sweating, and the other for your intestines, because you're going to mobilize the circulation and make your intestines move more. Thanks, guys. Stay with God.